Supposedly, Harold Arland stole the melody of Over the Rainbow from a Scandinavian composer who just so happened to support a movement that came out of Germany during World War II. Yeah, this one's gonna be messy. Hello, fellow Aussians, and welcome to the channel. Today, we will be looking at an article from The Hollywood Reporter. Scandal in Oz. Was Over the Rainbow plagiarized? The Academy Award-winning ballad from The Wizard of Oz is perhaps the most enduring melody ever to come out of Hollywood, but its uncanny similarity to a long-forgotten piece by a Nazi-era composer has some questioning its authorship. Norwegian pianist Rune Alver carefully unfolded the brittle sheet music and began caressing the keys of the baby grand. He had found the classical piece buried in an archive and believed it hadn't been heard in maybe a century. But as he delved into the second section, cantando, he felt a shiver down his spine. The melody wasn't just reminiscent of something he'd heard before, it was iconic. He instantly recognized the unforgettable, yearning opening notes of Over the Rainbow, the Academy Award-winning anthem Judy Garland performed in The Wizard of Oz, perhaps the most famous song to come out of Hollywood. How could this be? The sheet music was dated 1910, and The Wizard of Oz premiered nearly 30 years later. But the melody hung there, somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. It was hauntingly similar. Too similar, he thought. About 10 years ago, Alver, now 67, was researching the works of a Scandinavian composer named Signe Lund when he made this disturbing discovery. In the late 19th century, Lund had been the toast of Oslo and went on to a successful career in the United States before her Nazi sympathies later in life turned her into a pariah. She was now long forgotten. It was at an archive in Bergen, Norway, that Alver unearthed the pages of her composition titled Concert Etude Opus 38, which she had written in the United States and copyrighted in Chicago in 1910 during one of her visits to America. Lund had performed the piece in many American cities. It was the most popular of her pieces in her lifetime, Alver says. The similarities between Lund's Opus 38 and composer Harold Arland and lyricist E.Y. Yip Harburg's Over the Rainbow cannot be dismissed, though there are notable variations. The former is in a minor key, for example, and follows a different time signature. The melodies of the main themes are nearly identical. Decades after the deaths of Arland and Harburg, it is impossible to unequivocally determine whether the similarities are unintended or deliberate. A notoriously difficult thing to prove even when all participants are living. But to Alver, who included Opus 38 on his 2020 CD, there is no debate about it. Of course it is plagiarism, he says today. Given the sacred aria that surrounds over the rainbow, the accusation borders on the blasphemous, akin to smudging the Mona Lisa. Yet Alver has no doubt that Lund's DNA can be found in Harold Arlen's melody. Of course, this is definitely the point where if you have not heard this particular piano etude, it's probably a good time to go Google it. And it does sound very similar to Over the Rainbow. The next section of the article gives us a biography of Signe Lund, and I'm not going 
to go through that entire section. I'll just kind of paraphrase it for you. Um, if you want to read this entire article, it is linked down below. But the one thing that I am going to get at with this particular article is that they do want you to slightly feel sorry for Signe Lund uh, because of the consequences of what happened to her particularly after she mm -hmm, uh, gave support for uh, hmm, the Nazis. And uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. The other thing that I find kind of interesting is that she lived to be the ripe old age of 81 and died in 1950, but she still never denounced her affinity to Nazism. Interesting. Um, after that, they then give us a short biography of Harold Arland. And I am very much assuming that all of you know who that is, <laughs> considering this is the Wizard of Oz channel. I am assuming we all know who that is. Um, so I'm going to skip that section as well, and we're going to get on to talking back about the similarities between the two pieces. The View from Oz. Listening attentively to Lund's Opus 38 for the first time, theater composer Stephen Schwartz seems more surprised to hear that it originated from a female European composer than by the possibility it might have inspired Over the Rainbow. Oh, I like that, who shoots back. Schwartz, like Arlen before him, has composed numerous Broadway hits, including such enduring sensations as Pippin, Godspell, and the Wizard of Oz prequel, Wicked. Oh, of course I can hear the similarity he offers. I would strongly challenge whoever said that this is plagiarism. If the question is, did Arlen deliberately take this, I'd lay very, very long odds that he did not. I think it's, of course, a curiosity, he says. It is interesting. What I would suspect happened is one of two things. I'd say it's a coincidence, or maybe possibly something that Arland heard or played when he was young, and it just became part of his palette from which he drew. As an unabashed fan of Arland and Oz, Schwartz coincides there are undeniable commonalities between Lund's and Arlen's compositions, but adds. If this was a different composer or in different circumstances, I might be a little more suspicious of something untoward having occurred here, but I think it's extremely unlikely. These things happen all the time. More often than not, they're inadvertent. There's a two-bar thing in one of my songs from Pippin, which years later I discovered, to my horror, was very similar to something in the Puccini opera Le Boheme, and was totally not deliberate. But of course, these things are in your ears. Many, many people have had the enjoyable experience of going through Andrew Lloyd Webber and pointing out the Puccini references in his work. Um, he references other ones as well, and this kind of gets into that interesting debate about where does inspiration come from, and that's something that even this article talks about. Um, to quote earlier, there's a famous saying that says that plagiarism is copying without inspiration, and inspiration is plagiarism without getting caught. That's an interesting quote. I think everyone is kind of influenced by something. But the major thing that I think that's interesting about this is that it gets into that conversation about inspiration and how we can be inspired by things and can create absolutely wonderful new things from potentially hearing what someone else did or saw something that someone else did. And this is something that even 
I have tried not to do with this YouTube channel since the very beginning. I know that I have this really bad habit of hearing things, seeing things, and it just kind of gets embedded into my subconscious. And it gets so embedded back there that, you know, later on, whether it's months or years, I will think that some sort of idea is completely original. And it's not because I either saw or heard a version of that earlier, and now it's just coming back to the surface. So I don't know if that's necessarily what happened with Harold Arland with this particular thing. Don't know. But I can tell you that I, with this thing that I've been doing here on YouTube, for years I avoided watching other Wizard of Oz content. I avoided listening to Wizard of Oz podcasts. I, I just didn't want to have other people's opinions potentially influence my own and then have me regurgitate something that is either completely the same as somebody else or very similar. I wanted all of these videos to completely come from me and be just completely my opinion and what I'm thinking. So that's an interesting aspect of this whole debate is uh, where does inspiration come from? How can you completely make something original that is yours? Can people actually do that today with as much music that has been written over the centuries and all of the melodies that have been done? Can we actually do something that is completely original? That's a really good question for all of y'all. But at the end of the day, do you think that Harold Arlen stole the melody from Lund? I personally don't. Uh, go listen to the piece. Uh, I will also have that link down below. Uh, it's interesting. That's what I will say. It is interesting. Uh, do I think it's a deliberate, deliberate stealing? No, I don't think it is. The other thing also about this is that if Harold Arlen did steal this, why hasn't it come out? that he stole from other composers to write his songs. That's just an idea and something to throw out to all of y'all, is that why would one piece be the one that you plagiarize and you didn't plagiarize anything else? Because like what was said in the article, if this was another composer, and let's say, for instance, this was their first big hit, and it just so happened to be the first song they ever wrote, I would definitely put suspicion on them. Absolutely. But we're talking about Harold Arland here. We're not talking about somebody new. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, and I will see y'all next time. And if you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. New videos are posted every two weeks on the 15th and last day of each month. And if that doesn't satisfy your appetite for Oz, follow the link in the description to ozclub.org and join the International Wizard of Oz Club. Until next time, bye y'all.